the biggest story coming out of South Asia, the security situation in Afghanistan. With every passing day, the Taliban is tightening its news around Afghanistan. As of now, the terror group has claimed stake on 19 provinces. Afghanistan has 34 provinces in total, more than half of which have been lost. Heavy fighting is underway between the Afghan National Army and the Taliban in the remaining cities. In the latest update, Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani has said that his top priority is to remobilize troops and avoid further bloodshed. I assure you that as your president, my focus is to prevent further instability, violence and displacement of the people. Thank you to the people who are standing among the security forces. Reorganizing the security forces is our priority. President Ghani's address comes at a time when the Taliban is at the door of the Afghan capital, Kabul. It has already claimed the second and third largest provinces. And as the threat to Kabul worsens with every passing minute, heavy security has been deployed in the national capital. And there is a, sun a sense of uneasiness and fear of palpable danger. Thousands of interpreters who worked for the United States and NATO are trying to escape the country as they fear retribution from the Taliban. Many are trying to confirm their visas at a processing facility at, capital, at Kabul's Hamid Karzai airport, where daily evacuation flights are leaving from. We serve for the American forces, we serve for the U.S. and ISAF forces, for the coalition forces. They have to take care about us. It is our turn to be helped. We help them, you know, we save their lives. We were the people who communicate with two cultures. We are, otherwise, without the interpreters, they did nothing. As the Taliban continues with its violent surge for power, there is a huge internal displacement crisis at play in Afghanistan. Over 400,000 people have left their homes, fearing for their lives, and have come to capital to seek refuge. But now their one safe haven is also under threat. Now, the Taliban's shocking advancement has left the world leaders scrambling for options as more and more countries close their embassies and evacuate their diplomats out of Afghanistan. U.S. Marines have returned to Kabul to oversee emergency evacuations. Our correspondent Anas Malik, who has been tracking all the developments on Ground Zero, has sent us this report from Kabul. Let's listen in. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, in his public address today, has said that he will not allow the bloodshed of an imposed war to continue. Significant words coming in today uh, from him in his uh, much talk about address that uh, had speculated that uh, President Ashraf Ghani might just resign. Uh, uh, well, on the other hand, if I talk to you about the Taliban offensive, they're literally very close to the city of Kabul, uh, just tw 25 to 30 miles southwest of the provincial of the capital city of Kabul. Uh, there is an on ongoing fight, a fierce battle that is currently ongoing in Medan Shahir as Taliban have launched a renewed offensive, a French offensive a fresh offensive in a bid to run over the province of Bardak in order to get as close to the capital city of Kabul. Anas Malik in Kabul, Afghanistan for Vion. And for more on this now, we're being joined by Colonel Lawrence Sellen, retired U.S. Army officer live from Montana, United States. Sir, thank you for joining us. The Taliban are on the... Are on Kabul's doorsteps and we heard a short while ago President Ashraf Ghani reiterate that he will continue to fight on and the consultations are underway and that he will reorganize Afghan security forces. That being says, said, when he says reorganize, what sort of plan of action do you think we're looking at going forward? Well, I don't think any reorganization of the Afghan forces will stop the Taliban now. I think only massive military intervention by the U.S. Uh, and NATO and perhaps other countries will stop the Taliban. I fully expect the Taliban to take over Afghanistan by the, certainly by the end of the year. I expect China to recognize the Taliban regime very quickly. And I expect China then to try to implement its plan to economically and militarily dominate South Asia. 
Now, this will include uh, China inviting Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan into the China-Pakistan economic corridor. They would begin to exploit mineral wealth in Afghanistan, and they'll build, start building military bases in Baluchistan on the Arabian Sea. And this will be at the mouth of the Persian Gulf. It will connect to the uh, naval base, of China's mm. naval base, Djibouti, at the entrance of the Red Sea and the and the Suez Canal, hmm. and will also link to the growing number of bases in the uh, South China Sea. Their intent is to dominate the uh, vital sea lanes of the northern Indian Ocean. Right, sir. You mentioned that only U.S. intervention can now overturn these advances. I will come to that in just a second. Now, we have been seeing the Taliban swiftly take over ma major provincial capitals and cities. Now, Pentagon's latest assessment of how long Kabul could stand is completely in contradiction. As per Pentagon, Kabul is not under any imminent threat environment. How do you assess this? No, I think it's certainly under imminent threat, and I don't expect it to last very long. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the only way into Kabul is through Bagram Air Base. Uh, the United States has left uh, Bagram Air Base, and that is probably under threat too. So I don't know how long... Uh, Kabul and the Afghan government can withstand an onslaught from the Taliban from all directions. Right, sir. Coming back to the point you made earlier, and also just to mention here, UK Defence Minister says that US troop pullout is wrong. As, and as someone who has seen this situation evolve very closely, we have seen the impact that the rapid troop patrol has had in Afghanistan. Do you feel that US intervention could have averted this conflict? Well, I, I think, yes, uh, if they had planned it co correctly. I mean, the problem all along it has been is that the American leaders, both civilian and military, have been waging the wrong war. It is not an insurgency. It is a proxy war being waged by Pakistan against Afghanistan using the Taliban as their proxies. That has always been the problem. As long as you considered it an insurgency, you would never win. You had to address the fact that Pakistan was actually behind the war in, against Afghanistan using the Taliban as their proxies. That was the problem. All right, sir. Now. U.S. Marines have returned to Kabul to oversee emergency evacuations. What can you tell us about that? And also, there are interpreters who are now at the Hamid Karzai airport trying to get out of Afghanistan. Well, it's reminiscent of what happened in South Vietnam after the U.S. troops with, withdrew there and uh, South Vietnam eventually fell to the North Vietnamese army and you had scenes of, of evacuations from the, the, the uh, roof of the American embassy uh, in Saigon. I'm afraid that it's going to look very much like that uh, going into the next few weeks, that uh, the Kabul and, and all the embassies will be under threat and there will be a, an emergency withdrawal and it will be, uh, I, th I think, uh, very detrimental to the to the uh, to the United States and the respect of in the world uh, of the United States and what it has done in Afghanistan or not done in Afghanistan. That's right. So this is reminiscent of what happened in Vietnam, and of course, it is the civilians who will be at the receiving end. They are truly caught in the crossfire here. There is fear on ground. How do you see the situation evolving on that front? Well, I think the, the Afghan civilians are going to suffer a great deal, not only from uh, what's going to happen in the next few weeks as the Taliban uh, in, uh, increase their onslaught of Kabul and other cities or, or areas remaining under the Afghan government, but there's going to be a, a tremendous amount of retribution against people who had cooperated with the Afghan government, cooperated with the United States and, and NATO. And also, we're going to see a great deal of oppression of the population in general, going back to the way it was when the Taliban uh, was in charge of Afghanistan before 2001. Mm. Right. And with the Taliban just miles away from Kabul now, and now in control of half of Afghanistan's 34 provincial capitals, what do you think should be the next steps right now? Well, I don't think there are terribly many good options uh, 
to to implement at this point. As I said in the beginning, unless there's massive military intervention by the United States and NATO and other countries, I, I don't think you can stop the Taliban at this point. I think we have to what we have to start looking towards is implementing a policy what I call strategic disruption to prevent China from benefiting from the power vacuum that was created by this withdrawal of the U U.S. and NATO. And that would mean, for example, uh, supporting uh, the independence movement in Baluchistan, supporting uh, ethnic self-determination, starting with the Pashtuns on the Durand line, and most importantly, working very closely with India and other democracies uh, in the region to, pre to uh, prevent China from benefiting from the situation and dominating the uh, vital sea lanes of the northern Indian Ocean. I think the future is, is, is probably the only thing that we can address at this point. Right. All right, Colonel Lawrence Seren, thank you so much for joining us with all your inputs on this. Thank you. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.